Hey, what's happening everybody? <clears throat> I want to do something a little bit different today. Instead of this being a video about something motivating or inspiring or a tool or strategy to live life, I want to kind of acknowledge and pay tribute to something. It was on this day, January 21st, 2010, five years ago, that Reach Out Worldwide landed in Haiti. And for those of you who don't know, Reach Out Worldwide is the charity that my very dear friend Paul Walker created and I was fortunate enough to get to go to be a part of it on the inaugural the inaugural run. And with it being the five year anniversary today, I thought it would be really cool to kind of revisit some personal memories there and do so just so you all know what the intention of Reach Out Worldwide has always been. And perhaps it will inspire you to be generous and help support Reach Out Worldwide as it is a nonprofit and as nonprofits go, they only go if we all do stuff to contribute to help them go. When Paul called me to, to called me and said that we should go, and we made the decision to go, I was in Costco and I was running around grabbing all the essential supplies, toilet paper, peanut butter, you know, we wanted to be prepared for anything. And in a couple days leading up to it, we were running through all the we were going to military surplus stores, REI, to make sure we got all the supplies. And we got backpacks, we got canteens, we got everything. Because Paul wanted to be able to show up and have us be completely self-sufficient so that we weren't taking resources from anyone else who needed them. We show up and we packed in what we needed and we pack out everything else. Getting to Haiti was quite the challenge. We were stuck in the Dominican Republic for a little bit and Fortunately enough, though, where we were stuck at was near the airport, and so we spent the better part of the day on the 21st actually helping pack all these boxes of supplies and loading them up on the trucks to, that were going to be delivered over to Haiti. And it was really cool because it was one of those scenes where you were surrounded by people you didn't really know. There was language barriers, there was all these different cultures, but everyone was so focused on a common goal. Everybody was there to help, everybody was there to try to help all these people who had something horribly unfortunate happen to them. So we're packing up boxes, we're packing up supplies, you know, and you start to make jokes. You start to make jokes about it and everybody's laughing and having fun. And finally word comes that we're going to be able to get over to Haiti. And as we're flying over to Haiti, it, was, it, it took about, oh, you know, probably an hour to get in. We, we took a helicopter in and the helicopter drops us off in the middle of this field. And we get out, we, we walk out with our backpacks, and we, there's this moment where we all kind of look at each other. There was just five of us. <laughs> we look at each other, and we're kind of like, well, now what? You know, we didn't have a plan. We didn't have a, we just had the intention of going and doing good and going to help. Unfortunately, as fate would have it, the place we ended up in turned out to be one of the primary primary destinations for people who were getting out, basically taken out of Port-au-Prince, out of the disaster areas, and taken to kind of recover. So over the course of the next three days, the population of that little area we were in grew from about you know 20 or so patients to, I think, well over four or 500 before we left. In fact, we were on the ground no more than an hour, I'd say, than a, the first bus or so f filled with people showed up. And almost right away, we we're sitting there helping carry out these people who had their legs. Were, I will never forget helping carry this guy out of this bus, and his whole leg was in a cast, and he was bleeding everywhere, and he just was all messed up. And that image always has stuck with me. And was just realizing, and then later that night, I was talking with one of the doctors, and they were saying, boy, you guys really showed up right at the right time. Because if you guys hadn't shown up when you did, we wouldn't have been able to handle all the people that just came in. And it was such a cool thing, because here we were out in Haiti, going over with the intention of making a difference, not knowing how exactly how we we're going to do this because this was just, this was the inaugural run. This was kind of testing it out to see if Reach Out Worldwide would be something that we could really pull off. And within a few hours, we were doing it. We were making it happen. And it happened because Paul had the belief in it. Paul had the vision of it. And he, he believed enough in people and that people deserved to have a shot at more in life that we were there and helping those people have that happen. You know, had we not have been there, who knows what would have happened. Maybe some of those people wouldn't have gotten help. They wouldn't have been able to get the help they needed. And maybe they, things wouldn't have turned out the same. I don't know. But what I do know is that we got there, we made a difference, and that difference happened because Paul's belief in Reach Out Worldwide 
and what it can what it could become and what it has become and what it can continue to become if you're all willing to help you guys i tell you that that day and being there was was and still is one of the greatest and most amazing days of my life it's something uh, i've done a, i feel like i've been fortunate enough to do a lot of cool things and see a lot of cool things it's easily one of the things i'm the most proud of it was such a blessing to be able to be there and you know, it's one of those situations where there's so much going on and you're, it's, it's the stimulus overload. It's so many things that aren't in your normal day-to-day -day life. But there's also, there's also something that was so special about that. You know, at night when we go to bed, there was five of us. And so we were all in these tents out in the field. And we'd sit there and we'd tell these jokes and we'd be laughing and giggling. And we'd be giggle hour until for an hour or so at night. It was just so funny. And at night we'd go to sleep and I remember it was really hot. It was unusually hot and for, it was like 90 degrees or something. And so we'd go to sleep and then in the middle of the night we'd wake up because it, the temperature dropped and we'd be shivering. And I remember one night I woke up and I said to Paul, I was like, man, it's really chilly. And he's all, well, you should have planned better and brought more, brought more supplies. And I was like, dude, we're in the tropics. How did I know where he's going to get this cold? And then we sat there and complained about how cold it was for a long time and made jokes about the cold. And then I was laughing so hard, I was warm because I was laughing so hard. And then of course, you know, we went back to sleep and did it over again. Anyways, beside the point. The point in me sharing you, sharing this with you all is one, I want to try to humanize Reach Out Worldwide and where it came from. It came from very, very humble beginnings. You guys, it came from very humble beginnings and it really was born from a person having an idea, grabbing some friends together and going forth with the intention to do good. You know, Paul was saying when you put goodwill out there, it's amazing what you can accomplish. And that's so true. Look at what Reach Out Worldwide has grown into today and what it can continue to grow into with all of your support. So you guys, on this fifth anniversary of Reach Out Worldwide, I humbly ask you to, you know, support it either financially or by sharing it and making one of your friends or family members aware of it. I'll put the link below. I have an ongoing pledge to raise $1 million for Reach Out Worldwide. So many of you have already been so generous in helping me do that with the event we did in September, which we'll do again this September. So this is just another opportunity to build on that, to build on that and to recognize Reach Out Worldwide for what it was, where it's come from, what it is today, and what it will be in the future with all your support. You guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my silly kind of jarbled stories. I wasn't sure what I was going to say. But I wanted to kind of have it be something in the moment, authentic, and from the heart. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you in advance for supporting Reach Out Worldwide. Thank you for sharing this video with somebody who hasn't learned about Reach Out Worldwide. Because by you bringing more awareness to it, it's going to help it continue on for long after Paul's gone and long after I'm gone. And long after all of us who are watching this are gone. It really has the potential to do something great beyond all of our lifetimes. And that will happen with your support. Thank you.